Here's a hole that I dug for you It's much too deep to see the point I was getting to Talk myself into half my size What's left of me never knows when to compromise But I'm gonna hold on tight And give you another peace of mind And if it don't come out right I'm only human, and believe me, we well, are prone to make mistakes. Love me or leave me, it's an easy choice to make. I'm only human, and I don't know how I ever got this far. Humans ain't always right, let's just be animals tonight. It's hard to walk with two left feet, stuck in my mouth, but it's all become routine. Every loss is another game I dress in black Just to hide all the coffee stains But I'm gonna hold on tight And start with a joke this time And if it had come out right I'm only human and believe me When you're prone to make mistakes Tell me you'll leave me It's an easy choice to make yeah. I'm only human and I don't know how I ever got this far Humans ain't always right Let's just be animals tonight Try to take back what I said Breathe deep, begin again End up a fool instead I spilled my drink on you Looked down and told the line Tripped over every time Get my attention time Let's go Let's just be, let's just be I'm only human and believe me We are prone to make mistakes Let me believe me It's an easy choice to make oh, 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 I'm only human and I don't know How I ever got this far Humans ain't always right Let's just be animals tonight Welcome to Raw I'm your host, Lena, and with me tonight is Matt Cuson. Thanks for having me. I said that right, right? You Matt Cuson. Ah, oh, yay. Flawless. Good. Well done. So we just heard one of your songs. Yes. Only Human. Yep. That Thank was you. pretty cool. Thank you. It was fun. Are you only human? No aliens that's allowed? That's the point. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that should have been the lyric, too. No aliens allowed, but that, yeah. It's, no, it has uh, a, a nice, catchy. It's, it's one of the more popular tunes on the record. I actually wrote it quite some time ago. Um, Eight, nine years ago, I started to write it, and then I finished some of the lyrics before the album was recorded last year. And uh, it's one of the more poppy songs. Of course, I'm a, you know, more a, a creative type, so I hate everything I did yesterday, so that song sucks. But uh, no, I'm kidding. Isn't that nice that you could come back to it? And it, it's, it is nice, especially uh, with the way we produced it. I, I, I kind of went all out with it. I put the horns on it just to give it the life that I needed, because it's new to everybody else. But the life that I needed uh, was adding horns and going crazy with the production. We had a ball recording it. And now we love playing it. It's fun to play live. That's nice. Now, who are the gentlemen playing with you? They're not here now, but... Bass was Johnny Morrow, an old friend of mine from... We went to Berklee College of Music together, as well as uh, the drums, Andrew Marsh, uh, two of my favorite musicians on the planet. And over here was Bernard Groben, Groben, who is a phenomenal guitar player from New York, born and raised. And this is actually the first time I played with Bernard in, like, 10, 12 years. Wow. I called him up and said, hey, come do Raw TV for me, and he was, he was available, so... Very nice. So you always have different uh, members with you. Right? I have my go-to guys, and then if they can't make it because of another gig or something, I always have backup guys. It's a good thing in New York. There's no shortage of musicians. Isn't it hard when you change musicians that you're afraid it's going to affect the a little music? Bit, but in I some try way? to a little bit, but I try to find guys that I've played with before. One, I, we're pretty free. We never played a song the same way twice. So I try to find guys that are good ear players, that can improvise, that just, I like to have fun. So this is a song that you took from a while back. Yeah. Did it again, but what were your first thoughts on it, and then what was your interpretation when you came back to it to say, I want to tweak this? Right, so it, the song originally started with a, a very awkward encounter with 
a, a woman. <laughs> Someone who was a, not human. <laughs> oh, no, I'm the not human one. Oh, yeah, no, she, okay. she was fantastic, but I'm the one that spilled the drink. During, there's a lyric, I spilled my drink on you. During dinner, during romantic dinner, all the little stupid, awkward stuff that we do on dates and this and that. And then that kind of over the the years became a metaphor for just how awkward I can be. I always feel awkward. Like when we were singing, I got off stage, I was like, I don't do this, you know, I just, <laughs> just always confused and always down on myself. And that's pretty much the whole album. But I feel like a lot of people can relate. So I called it Only Human, and that's one of the reasons why I called it Only Human. But the song is just about an awkward encounter with a woman that I made more for. The and awkward human being. No awkward women anymore. You're not awkward. I'm married women. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's all different now. She, she likes totally the different game. Oh, so I, okay. that's that's what you got to do. You got to find somebody who embraces it. All right. I think. Okay. Now the next song that we're going to hear from next, you. Next song is for my wife. Um, it's called Next to You. It's a blues song. Okay. We're I, gonna let's hear it okay, and then we're gonna come gotcha. back and talk about it. Perfect. Okay? Sounds good. So here you go, Matt Q song. No shine in my shoe. Got a 40 year plan. I'm much too lazy to do, but I'll see through. Yeah, my wallet's a joke, but it's nice being broke next to you. Life ain't always fair. It's just one shade of green. And it's getting nowhere. It's my daily routine. I've got no place to be. So I hope you don't mind wasting all of your time next to me. You're out of this world, I'm out of my mind And you've yet to run for your life So I'll count on my ups When life hands me down And never complain Long as you stay next to me Gave me your hand. I cut you my key. Bet you never planned on shacking up with a fool like me for all eternity. But I'm happy always spending all of my days next to you. Hey. This world, I'm out of my mind. You've yet to run for your life. So I count on my ups when life hands me down and never complain long as you stay next to me. So you gave me your hand. Cut you my key Bet you never planned no. On shacking up with a fool like me For all eternity In sickness and hell No matter my wealth Here's a cheap ring and a no ball and chain Happy always Spending all of my days 
next to you. We're back with Matt Cusan, and that was next to you. Now, now you just you started telling us that this right, is right. for your wife. I wrote this song for my wife. Uh, sticking with the awkward theme, it's about this beautiful woman who was amazing and made me better and all that stuff and all the cliche stuff. But a beautiful, perfect woman marrying a lowly musician like myself, like the first lines or one of the first uh, hooks say. Uh, uh, my wallet's a joke, but it's nice being broke next to you. So it's just, it, you know, sticking with the awkward theme. Well, there's no money involved in love, right? Or music. Right. Uh, <laughs> <there> you, <laughs> so, you actually have a fabulous background in music. You've mm -hmm. done a lot. I've been, and been around a lot. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I was reading on your website, mm -hmm. which if anyone wants to check it out, his name is spelled C-H-U-S-S-O-N. Close. Oh. You love that H. C U S S O N. Oh, You're the best. Dad, keep looking like. Okay, <laughs> Cuson. C U S S O N. Yep. But Dot on com. your website, I mean, you've got Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, spill it all out. Oh, it's, God, you're going to make me name drop. Uh, yeah. Stevie, James Taylor was one of my favorites. Uh, Brian McKnight, I've been touring the past five or so years with Megan Hilty, who's just one of my favorite people on wow. earth. Wow. Uh, I did CeeLo Green last year. Um, I miss Aguilera. him on The Voice, by the way. He was fun. He was hilarious with the cat. How, like how is he in person? Like He's awesome. He's great. It was a lot of fun when we, when we did some shows together. I he, mean, he can sing. Now, as you're mentioning all these people that you've mm -hmm. toured with who are fabulous in their own right, as you are in your own right, I could see you as a good matchup with them with your sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. So any of them influence? Because like oh my God. some of them... Yeah. We, uh, we grew up with, really. Stevie Wonder and James Taylor are two of my favorite singer-songwriters, artists ever. And I go through phases where I'm Stevie Wonder for a long time, and then I'm James Taylor for a long time. But them and, I, like, uh, obviously Brian McKnight. When I first heard Brian McKnight's first single, I was, I think, eight or nine. And I said, oh, my God, I want to sound just like that. So for the next year, I just mimic Brian McKnight. And that's, I think, growing up, you mimic all these people. Uh, only to find your own sound. Well, when, right, when they hit yeah. you. That's your influence, and Absolutely. you find you in there somewhere. Exactly, exactly. So that's, that's that pretty totally awesome. that totally helps find, find whatever it is that you're supposed to do. Now, the keyboard, that's the only thing that you, you play? No, I play guitar as well. Uh, I'm not as good at guitar, but I actually write most of my songs on guitar. Interesting. So I learned guitar by play, playing Brazilian music, because I love Brazilian music. So I can play all the chords and all the jazz stuff and all the, all the, all the uh, finger-picking stuff. But if you ask me to just rock out and play C, D, and uh, I stink at it. Stink. I stink at it. <laughs> and, but isn't uh, that something that you write with the, with the guitar? I do write a lot on guitar. Like, it limits me. So it, it kind of, it kind of, uh, I have to stop at a certain point. Whereas the piano, I can get carried away. Um, so you find that you stay more focused then. I stay a little more focused about, it's more about the song than the, oh, let me throw this jazzy thing or let me impress somebody You can always add to it, right? I like do. you do add horns and Completely. whatnot to, yeah, to compliment. Yeah. yeah, I try not, uh, I once heard Quincy Jones say, let the song write itself. So wherever, whatever instrument I'm on, I just try to let it flow. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a long time, but sometimes they come out in 30 minutes, so you never know. That's great. Okay, now we're going to go on to the next song. Yes. Uh, this song is called Where'd You Go? Where'd You Go? Where'd You Go? Later. Where'd you you go? don't go anywhere. We're going to hear <laughs> Where'd You Go? Face my friend, where does the time go? I remember how we'd say good day, flying circles in my pillowcase, fighting evil with 
the sugar free I was your hero Now it's almost morning Time to face another day again Living up to nothing we planned In the street that we knew Doesn't look like it used to It's a long, long way from home Always knew you would be When I'd hide and you'd seek me And that was Where'd You Go? Matt Cusan. Nailed it. Ah! <laughs> Matt, C-U-S-S-O-N. You have to check yep. out the website because his background is phenomenal and the music is great. So, where'd you go? Where'd you go, <laughs> yes. Where'd you go to school to study? Because obviously you're telling us about the guitar, but right. you could tell the way you are on the keys that well, mostly, mostly... So I've never had any training on the keys. You're kidding. Yeah, I'm an ear player. I started when I was... The first song I ever played, I was six or seven years old, and I played Ribbon in the Sky by Stevie Wonder. And what I a just, song. I heard it, and I played it, and I figured it out for a second, and my parents were freaked out. They were like, well, who taught you that? How'd they backed you up that? when you said and you then, wanted to go into music, though, right? Uh, they did. Well, my mom is actually a piano teacher, so everybody thinks she taught me, but she's a complete read classical music, and I don't, you know, I can't read a note. It's German to me. So, but I did go to Berkeley College of Music to study uh, voice. And I was only there for about a year because the dropout rate there is like 70% or something like that. And uh, I left to, I actually, uh, Brian McKnight came to the school, heard me sing, and I literally dropped out that night and he flew me to his house the next day. And we started recording a couple tunes together and that started our very long relationship. What a it was story crazy. that is. That's that doesn't just... happen to anyone. Yeah. And so I'm the luckiest man alive. I mean, something like that. That was that was awesome, and I kind of want to write it in a short story form because it was such an amazing moment. That'd be a great Especially movie. idolizing him when I was like nine. Yeah. Oh. And then wow. here he is out of nowhere. It was very random how it all happened. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So now, where'd you go? Is about. Where'd you go? Is um, about a childhood friend. When I was five years old, 
these, this family moved in next door and there was a four-year-old and a three-year-old and we became instantly inseparable until they were about, I was about maybe 11 or 12 years old and the most vivid memory I had, which I described uh, clearly in the second verse is uh, their father got a new job and they had to move away. And I remember the moving day. And when they started to drive away, I didn't get to say goodbye, so I ran outside on my porch to say to wave goodbye. But their boxes were packed so high in the car they couldn't see me. So picture this little ten-year-old kid saying, you know, and I was crying. It was Aww. awful. So that is about. But I ran into them on tour a couple years ago uh, in two different spots, and we talked till the sun came up. And it so the the, the song kind of jumps around. Isn't it great the connection you have with childhood because it's we're crazy. growing and, it's and like learning we together? And it, and we talked like. We had not, not talked for 20 years or whatever it's been. But um, yeah, the song kind of just jumps around from the childhood memories to now. Here we are talking now. And then, man, we're, what happened? Like that, it's, that's the whole, each section of the song is a different time. That's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I can't believe you didn't have any formal training because you like. Uh, Vocally, yes. But piano wise, I just, I listen and play. I, I, I you know. I, I love the Oscar Petersons of the world. The, these, the best piano players in the world inspired me, you know, to, to, the, to the, you know, there's no words for how. So now about. with that, is there any instrument that you would really love to p pick up and play? Oh, I want bass to be my next instrument. I oh, love really? The bass. Yes, I love the bass. And I want to get better at the guitar, too. Um, I, my, my 2017 resolution was I, I'm going to play at least two songs per show. I didn't do it today, but two songs per show on guitar. Because I'm pretty good when I'm in my house, but when I play in front of people, like today, my, my voice gets all quivery and I start to fumble around a little bit. But that's my resolution, and it's been good so far. I've done a ton of shows in 2017, and so far I'm feeling comfortable. But bass is the next one I want to learn. All right, well, I wish you luck with that. Thank you. If, if you come out anywhere like the piano, you're going to be brilliant. I hope so. It so took you're a good. long time. Um, now, Calling in a Night, that's calling the last song. Calling in a Night, yes. So just check this out, Calling in a Night. We're not yet, but check it out. <laughs> I don't recall exactly how I got here It's all been unpredictable at best I wouldn't say I'm better off than last year I've kept my sense of humor nonetheless and now the times, the face, the dreams are changing I'm acting out my life in metaphor The chances that I took before the taking I fake a smile and hope for something more So wrap me up, I'm calling it a night. I've tried my luck and fought the good fight. And as history would tell, the story won't end well. So wrap me up, I'm calling it In searching for the far and few reactions I've tried to find a blessing in disguise Instead of waiting for my life to happen I closed my mouth and opened up my eyes So wrap me I'm calling it night I've tried my luck And fought the good fight And as history would tell The story should end well So wrap me up I'm calling it a night I've learned to fight the war with broken weapons 
weapons Make excuses for the questions Life's an imperfection That finds a way to live Waiting in the wings The twisting of the story For me History would tell the story ended well. So wrap me up. I'm calling it night. Wrap me up. I'm calling it a Hello, I'm back with Matt Cusan, and we just heard Calling It a Night. So we're about to call it a night. Oh. Not, not quite yet. Sure, okay. But uh, what was that song? And you, like, that song... Did you get stuck at the bar or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, God. I have a song about that, though, as well, on the album called Already Gone. But that song, that's the last one I wrote before the, the uh, album was done. Uh, a lot of my friends were like, you have to do at least one song, just you and piano. Because the song, the album is full of these huge arrangements and orchestras and horn sections. And I said, okay. And I sat down and that song kind of embodies the whole record. Um, it's an unconventional love song for my wife, kind of, because I only mention her once. I only say the word you one time at the, towards the end of the song. But the song is kind of about, you know, how, you, you know, you're, you're a certain age and, you, and this, you f feel like you got what you want to do figured out. And it never usually works out that way. So then it moves on to not working out that way. And I don't know what the heck I'm going to do now. And then the bridge, I say, OK, I learned how to deal with that. But little did I know the twisting of the story was you coming into my life. And you know, they, it kind of, it's kind of like how it all, all these crazy missteps and accidents ended up with her. And then she makes it kind of all worth it. And that's when you have to believe in fate in a way, right? Somewhat, Everything yeah. legit. That's what it is, yeah. I'll take fate. Fate works. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So now I'm wearing a, a night before Christmas dress. I love and that dress. Say, and I hear that you actually really love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love the season. I love I'm one of the few people in the Northeast that loves the winter. I love putting turtlenecks and big cozy old man sweaters on and nothing drinking like hot getting cocoa. cozy, right? Nothing Bundling like up, it. snuggling. Oh, it's the best and putting the tree up. Yeah, I'm a big Christmas freak. And I'm, I have, uh, we actually counted last year, I have 7,000 Christmas songs from the ultra rare to Jackson 5 or whoever, you know. I have uh, 300. For a second, I thought you had 7,000 songs that you wrote for I Christmas. I wish I'd be way richer. Uh, but then I have 312 Christmas movies or specials. Um, oh, so you really do I'm love Christmas. I'm a collector. Christmas. I'm a collector. <laughs> he of, loves love Christmas. Love Christmas. Yeah, okay. it's kind of creepy. <laughs> but so you're gonna work on a Christmas song? Well, I have a Christmas EP that came out in 2012. Four tunes um, I did, and that's the most played. Uh, Sirius XM plays out a ton every year, so really? I'm thankful for them. Thank you, Sirius XM. And uh, that's been a really, really big. Uh, project for me. So this year I'm going to try to record at least one or two more, get them out there, and then uh, we'll see. A full Christmas album is definitely a, a dream one of these days, but it's, it's hard because you got to record Christmas albums in like May. So it's always right hard. by the time they're done and they're out. People right. don't realize like the turnaround right. and what right. goes into it. So. Right, that's a lot. Well, it's thanks so much for coming Thank and sharing you. with you us. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to check out Matt Cusan. Like Q-tip. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Check him out too. He's good. <laughs>